Man, oh man, Star Wars has just been getting some hate ever since Last Jedi came out. Since Disney bought Lucasfilm, I thought everyone was just gonna love everything they did from then on, but that just wasn't the case. Force Awakens divided Star Wars fans because some people said it was too much like the original. And from then on, it feels like every Star Wars movie has been divisive since then. But this one is the first one to divide the fans before it even came out. <laughs> Solo, A Star Wars Story. I love my little Millennium Falcon. So Solo, A Star Wars Story is the second of these Star Wars anthology films. You know, we had Rogue One a year and a half ago. It told the story of the rebels who got the plans for the Death Star. Now, we have a story about Han Solo before the events of Episode 4, A New Hope. Kind of the origins of some of the things we really like about the character. But of course, you can't bring Harrison Ford back to play him because he's in his 60s now and this is a quote-unquote origin story, so we need to get a younger actor to play him. So in the role of Han Solo in this movie, we have Alden Ehrenreich, which is like one of the biggest things that divided fans. Some people say, oh, he's not Harrison Ford. I hate him. Why even have this movie at all? You know, why have a younger Han Solo played by another actor? That's just pointless. And other people were like, nah, I want to see what he does with it. You know, he's a younger version of Han Solo. So that's why he's not like Harrison Ford. I personally really liked him as a young 20-something year old Han Solo in this movie. He had the charm and wit and charisma of a young Han Solo that you would expect him to have. And it's funny though, when I was watching this movie, I was imagining a younger Harrison Ford, you know, in his place doing the same things that Alden Ehrenreich was doing on the screen. And in some cases, I felt it worked really well, and in other cases, not so much. There were, in fact, a couple of points where I was like, yeah, I don't think Harrison Ford's Han Solo would do that. I'm a Star Wars fan, especially the original trilogy, so I know those characters really well. That's where a lot of the nitpicks start to come in, where I'm like, I don't think Han Solo from the original trilogy would do that. And this movie doesn't necessarily take place too long before the original trilogy, maybe about five plus years beforehand. But you see how Han Solo evolves in this movie to become closer to the Han Solo you know from the original trilogy. And of course, this movie explains how he met Chewbacca. You know, Han Solo and Chewbacca, they're real bros in the original trilogy. I love Chewbacca in this movie. I love the story of how they met. I love their chemistry in this movie. You see how they really become good friends. You buy it. At least I bought it. Because if you ask me, Han and Chewie is like one of the most memorable and one of the best bro relationships in cinema. So to see the genesis of that, it's like Kirk and Spock in Star Trek in 2009. It's like you're seeing them meet for the first time, they fight sometimes, but it just gives their relationship layers. It was the best part of the movie, with Chewbacca being the heart of it. The female lead in this movie is Amelia Clark as Kira, and her character was fine enough. I mean, she has kind of a tension with Han Solo that I don't really want to elaborate on here because that is kind of delving into spoilers, but you don't really know where she stands on the whole situation that Han is dealing with in this movie. What are her viewpoints on it? That affects their relationship. I mean, Amelia Clark is a great actress. Watch Game of Thrones for proof of that. But I wouldn't call Solo a Star Wars story an example of her best work. But the movie does work to keep some mystery about her character, which I was like, I thought she was the female lead. Again, maybe it's just a personal thing with me, but I like knowing my main characters. Speaking of knowing your main characters, y'all remember Lando Calrissian. The one thing that fans were not divisive on is that Donald Glover was really good casting for Lando. And yeah, he was. He was so smooth and charismatic. He's a badass, man. I mean, half of it is just him being Donald Glover. I mean, halfway through the movie, I expected him to be all like, this is America. Don't get you slipping now. That's a sweet music video. He's not in the movie as much as I would have liked him to have been. I would have loved to see a lot more of him, which I'm sure is why Lucasfilm was like, yeah, we might do a movie just all about him because he's received a lot of positive feedback. Lando is all about the charisma in this movie and Donald Glover pulls it off. And then there's L337, who's kind of Lando's security droid, like co-pilot. And she was fine in the movie too. She didn't have as much screen time as I hoped she would. In fact, she was like so in the background or I, at least I don't remember that much about her that I'm probably not even gonna remember that character in a bit. And then there's Woody Harrelson as Tobias Beckett, who is the expert smuggler who kind of takes Han Solo under his wing reluctantly and gets him started on his path to being a scruffy looking nerf herder. I have said repeatedly that Woody Harrelson is an amazing actor and this movie is no exception to that. He's great in this movie. He plays that kind of reluctant, ugh, do I have to drag this kid along? All right, kid, here's how it's done. But if you die, that's on you. Here's a blaster, good luck. Like it's pretty obvious to see why Woody Harrelson was cast. Yeah, I got no complaints about him. Paul Bettany as Dryden Voss is kind of the main antagonist of the movie, although he's not in the movie that much either. I mean, he was fine in this kind of one-note role, but again, the movie's not really about the villain, it's about the origins of Han Solo, so I can't really fault Paul Bettany for that, because the movie does a good job, in my opinion, of saying, hey, this is the origin of some of the stuff you like about Han Solo. The movie's like a tall tale in that sense, and I like that. I like how the movie focused on the character of Han Solo and his relationship with Chewbacca, because them and maybe Lando are like really the only characters you really care about in this movie, but that's not a bad thing, because the other characters, like Kira and Beckett, they shape who Han Solo is, you know, they affect him. Han Solo is 
is the favorite character of a lot of Star Wars fans. So even if you were against this movie even being made, you gotta admit you're at least a little curious to see his roots. Come on, just admit it. But where the movie kind of fell behind for me was first of all, some of the action sequences were a little shaky. I couldn't really tell who was fighting who or for what reason. I mean, I knew the mission. I knew what Han Solo and his crew were trying to do. But in the end, you're like, why should I care exactly? I get that it's world building and this movie might be spinning off into other things later down the line in the Star Wars universe, but with the core main storyline of Star Wars being in such a dramatic place right now, that is much more interesting and gripping to me. I feel like these little world building anthology movies are just filler. But they're fun filler, you know? I don't hate them. I had a lot of fun with this movie, but like all the characters that are fighting each other, you're like, all right. Characters are fighting. I know where this movie's gonna end up, for the most part. The plot did seem a little convoluted, and it's because of all the, you know, different criminal gangs that Han Solo's dealing with. This movie delves into the criminal underworld of the Star Wars universe, and I'm sure there are like three separate gangs that this movie's dealing with. I can remember one of their names. Which again, isn't a bad thing, because that's not the point of this movie. The point of the movie is Han Solo. Now this being a newer Star Wars film, it's gonna have fan service, because all the new Star Wars films since Disney bought Lucasfilm have had fan service. But I love the fan service in this movie. If I'm being completely honest, Rogue One has had some really bad shoehorn fan service. I'm looking at you, seeing with R2-D2 and C-3PO. The fan service in this movie? I don't even know if you can call it fan service because it's just the origin of what you like about Han Solo, including him getting the Millennium Falcon, the origin of how he won it from Lando, which is a great scene, by the way. Again, it's like a tall tale. I also really like the score in this movie. It was John Powell, who I haven't heard from in a while, ever since, like, How to Train Your Dragon. I was worried the score would be really, like, acoustic, western, twangy kind of stuff, which I did not think would fit the Star Wars universe. Luckily, a lot of the score is very orchestral, very John Williams-like, which I appreciated. Yeah, if you ask me, the music in the anthology films at least has to sound like John Williams a little bit. It's just that's a very specific thing to Star Wars. You know, it's only Star Wars if the music sounds remotely John Williams-like, or if it's John Williams himself. Otherwise, it just feels off to me. Thankfully, the score in this movie didn't do that. So yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed Solo A Star Wars Story. I like the characters that you're supposed to like. The ones that are left in the background, I was like, all right, they don't really matter. All the acting was really good though. The story was a bit convoluted, but again, it's just a world building filler Star Wars movie. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. So I let it slide. The visual effects of course were awesome. The music was really good. I want to see this movie again. I really do. So for Solo, A Star Wars Story, I will say, go see this movie while it's in theaters. If you want an explanation for why this video is kind of late, it was my birthday weekend, man. I've been swamped. I've had friends here from out of town, and we've just been doing a whole bunch of shit. I've not had the time to talk about this movie, but here it is now. So, Solo A Star Wars Story. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? I really want to know what you thought about this movie, because the score on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't think it deserves that low. So whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.